to, you know, to other things, to who you hang out with, and just, yeah, it, it just, the ball just keeps rolling yeah. and gathers um, more and more weight as the abuse continues. What do you um, think? Which could has physical physical effects on the person, mental, emotional, it's it's mad how it ends up unfolding and the long term effects it has on the person suffering. But then the person doing the abuse that's often like learned behaviour, which is another problem. But it's a problem in itself. You're learning it from somewhere, then you're doing it and you're teaching you know, if you then have kids, they will see that behaviour, yeah. they learn that behaviour, and so it goes on. It's the same with, yeah, any, any problematic behaviours. Do you know, you just answered my question without me even asking. <laughs> 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 I, I do ramble on, so, yeah. Literally, I was about... What was the question going to be, though, out of curiosity? <laughs> I'm going to ask, like, um, <coughs> how do you think it could be... Um, kind of combated in the future but pretty mm. much what you just said well yeah I mean cutting the cycles but then it's how do you cut the cycle so um, people need to go to therapy more basically people need to accept problems and issues that they have and um, mm. deal with them and face them rather than passing that issue on to someone else who then passes it on to someone else and and so it goes on it's a complete dominoes effect if you one person doesn't accept and deal with it it just has a knock-on effect on many other people throughout their life um you know future partners and children and whoever else is connected to that person basically um and themselves as well. It can't be a very pleasant way to live, treating people like that and um, dealing with the, the effects of knowing that you treat people like that. I mean, I guess if you're in denial, then you aren't dealing with the guilt, but yeah, my advice would be, or my suggestion, uh, for part of the solution would be um, accepting and dealing with issues in a positive way um, before you affect other people um, and then collectively as society um, less bystanding and actually standing up, speaking out when you see something um, like I said it doesn't have to be a big you know, shout and scream about it can be, you can support someone in, di in a discreet way um, and then just socially you know, voicing the fact that those issues exist and speaking to your friends about it your guy mates, your female mates and addressing addressing things on like a more local level as well like local to you yeah your environments and then that will then have a knock-on effect as well so um, yeah <laughs> i don't know if that answers the question pretty much like pretty much. yeah three ways basically <laughs> um do your research educate yourself on uh where the lines are get therapy deal with your issues so you don't affect other people in a negative way and continue the cycle uh, for future generations as well and addressing your social circle work circle um, just starting conversation about these things um, communication is key and um, yeah, and standing up when you see things like that happening yep. so I think that was four Four, four solutions. Okay. Um, Let's call it the um, the solution square. <laughs> solution square. Yeah, yeah, that sounds cool.
two sides to every story, but four sides to, to solution. the solution for a resolution, yeah. <coughs> basically. Sorry, I keep coughing. Yeah, sorry. Mm. Um, so, like, I was asking you this question before about is it acceptable to go to a disgraced chef, disgraced chef's restaurant? Mm. So, say for example, I'm not saying that he is, I'm just because I know his name, Jamie Oliver, I'm not saying he is, right guys, I'm just... Oh, you're using just him as using an example. example. Example, Okay, that's dangerous if people just like tap in and out of the podcast. Yeah. Example. So, <coughs> say for example, Jamie... A famous chef. A famous chef was uh, like called out for sexual harassment or sexual assault mm -hmm. and um, you used to go to his restaurant all the time um, and you loved his cooking but then now you find out about the harassment case does that diminish his cooking? Of course I think so anyway well it doesn't diminish his skill yeah. as a chef like, he still has that skill, he can still cook. Yeah, of course. Very well. However, pardon the pun, is going to leave you with an extremely better taste in your mouth if you yeah. go there knowing what that person's done. Yeah, of course. Um, on the same note, we could speak about R. Kelly. Yeah. Do you still, and I've heard this debated on the radio, would you still go to, play yeah. his music? Would you still listen to his tunes? Um no would be the answer for me personally because well I mean I think the reasons are obvious actually yes yes they still have that skill yeah they're still an amazing chef or an amazing musician and they're super talented um, and you can't take that talent and skill away from them however I would not um I couldn't enjoy their music in yeah because rather than you would th you think about the lyrics in a different way you think about you think about what that person's done as soon as you hear that and the same with if you're eating at a restaurant with a chef they've done the same thing I guess so as soon as you walk into that space or put yourself in their space and like physically or if it's music just you know like emotionally it's it's not the same and then you're also just filling their pocket yeah. And do you really want to, but, uh, you know, what well, filling a pocket to so that they can pay their lawyer to yeah, that's true. fight the case against the person yeah. that they abused? Like, Cause then <coughs> so for me, no, for many reasons. I couldn't, I know some people can separate the two, like you could still enjoy the music or you could still enjoy the food, but it, everything in me would just say this is wrong like I guess with R. Kelly the hands that made that music the hands that made that food ugh just ugh, no it, it's only for me with R. Kelly kind of yes but then really I mean kind of as in yes I, I, I don't want to listen to his music anymore okay. <laughs> but then it's like no on like it's like so for example like Aaliyah he pretty much wrote and produced all of her songs, like especially that song "Ages Enough of Our Number," which is mm -hmm. a complete banger. But then, after watching the documentary, and, f and then like seeing what it, basically what the story is about, yeah. like I didn't even I didn't even think about it at the time. Like "Ages and I was like, "Yeah, that's a great song." But like mm -hmm. when you actually find out what it's about, it's just like listening to the song doesn't feel right anymore. Mm -hmm. Like. Just knowing all the information that I know about R. Kelly and how, like, <laughs> that he married Aaliyah when she was 15, but someone got the papers changed so that it made her look like she was 18. Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> again, again, like, how did no one, how did no one else bring that to... How could no one bring that to people's attention? This, Surely someone knew that she was 15. Yeah. Obviously he was a powerful guy, so he probably... 
I'm just answering my own question. You probably will have paid people off and manipulated yeah, of other people. But it's that's just kind of the person thing, he was. But the thing that I guess that annoys me the most about the documentary is just people like who were R. Kelly's friends at the time who were in the documentary saying explaining stories where I walked into the studio he's got a bed there, he's got a bed there he's got all these girls all over the place and I'm like what the hell's going on and I was like but why didn't you say anything at the time why yeah. is it now 20 years down the line and you're suddenly talking about it in a documentary yeah. this doesn't make any sense again, to me again it's that bystander culture that mentality that needs to be addressed yeah exactly um, I get that people okay so Again, they probably didn't say anything because they were fearful of their own safety yeah, or or success in some way. They didn't want him to damage um, their yeah. image and their life. So, but gosh, we really need to. We need to just do the right we thing. We really need to get over yeah. that um, because. If you're allowing it to continue, that's just so many other people's lives. Yeah ruined um, it's, yeah it's really sad it's um, like you're saying you're okay with it because it's not happening to you yeah exactly um, yeah <laughs> it's exactly that um, um, what, where do you do you want to? I can't remember what, what my yeah. actually original point was. To but yeah, the R. Kelly the music. documentaries oh. go. Oh yeah, that was the question. So like, say would example, I or could I? Um, so say for example, Chris Brown, who yeah can't listen to his can't listen to his music no. ever. Okay, fair. Is is the same? It's the same principle. Yeah. Like it's yeah it's, it's the same principle. Um, I don't have respect for him. Yes, he st- still makes good music, but my respect is obviously completely gone. And again, I'm not going to support someone who who does that. Sure. Um. So no, is my answer personally. Yeah. No, of course. <coughs> but, I mean, there's some people who would say no for R. Kelly, but then yes for Chris Brown. It's just... Well, yeah, then you've got to question where your principles lie and why no to him, but yes to listening to Chris Brown. Just, like, do it's you view that as a lesser crime or I mean it's still it's, it's still a crime and it's, it's still, still something the, that I just I, and yeah Rihanna's living her life but she's out of it but, but it doesn't excuse the fact that it happened to begin with yeah and I'm sure it still affects her even though yeah. on the surface it looks like she's fine that doesn't mean that people are completely fine no, like you don't get over stuff like that um, instantly um, so no I wouldn't listen to his music either very fair <laughs> I have no other people that I know um, um, I'm sure the more. list goes on and on and on unfortunately just destroy the music <laughs> yeah <laughs> the library more female artists to listen to oh, female <laughs> artists are the best thing. <laughs> um, what else was, were we going to speak about um, you had stories of yeah wars. obviously there's lots of I mean depending on think, how much you wanted to go into yeah I mean considering the fact that half 50% of women are sexually harassed and I think that figure is it's very is faint it's not truly representative um, then obviously there are I have many stories personally uh, from my friendship group um, I mentioned one of yeah, yeah, someone yeah. who was on a bus recently yeah. and then nothing was done about that obviously she didn't report it because reporting it seems like you know that's your time it's, you that, yeah. it's your time, your effort you don't know if it's going to come to anything 
it's stress that might not even be 